Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown TV, your weekly source for what's trending in the world of wrestling. Iowa State's head coach, Kevin Dresser, has finalized his coaching staff with the hiring of three former Hawkeyes. Zadok and Derek St. John were both on his staff at Virginia Tech, while Brent Metcalf was a freestyle developmental coach for a short while at USA Wrestling. Zadok, who will serve as associate head coach for the Cyclones, was a three-time All-American, winning the 149-pound Big Ten title in 2002. St. John plays fourth at the NCAA championships as a freshman, second as a sophomore, first as a junior, and fifth as a senior, making him one of the most successful Hawkeye wrestlers of all time. Metcalf is one of the most decorated wrestlers in Iowa history, a two-time national champ and a three-time NCAA finalist in his three seasons with the Hawkeyes. Iowa State has scheduled a press conference to announce the hires, and we'll have highlights of that later this week on Global Wrestling News. All right, three-time Pennsylvania State champ Spencer Lee has long been considered the top youth prospect in the country. A three-time world champ, Lee was looking to end his high school career undefeated and join an elite list of four-time state champs. But just a month from realizing that dream, Lee was diagnosed with a torn ACL, a devastating injury for any athlete and one that should have sidelined for the remainder of the year. Well, after weighing his options, Lee decided to compete through the pain and made it back to the state finals but he dropped a last-second decision to Austin DeSanto. In this takedown exclusive, Lee talked about his decision to compete at the state and the next chapter of his career as a Hawkeye. Well, you just can't look at it negatively. I mean, obviously, my, me being injured is a negative, but I'm just trying to focus on the positivity of, of like a long-term uh, look, look, look towards it. I mean, that's what my doctors always told me, it, and my dad and everyone, I have to look long-term. Uh, make sure my knee's healthy because I plan on wrestling for a really long time. So I plan on making sure my knee's healthy and uh, all that. I mean, they all told me not to wrestle the states. Uh, I chose to wrestle because you know I don't think I could have lived with myself knowing that I could have sat in the stands. You know, and I got a lot of uh, crap for losing. You know, you know, and I give Austin a lot of credit. He dropped down and he said, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna beat him." And he did. And I, I really respect that a lot. That's why I cheered him on. That's you know? some character. I said, "You're you're the man." But uh, you know, I, I got a lot of a lot of people tell me like you know when I got basically booed in my own arena for losing. Um, I almost and it sucks because I literally could have just sat in the stands and not wrestled. I was I wasn't even supposed to wrestle. And it do, it does hurt a little bit that my PA crowd pretty much jeered me and booed me and. My parents and my family got a lot of comments like, hi, you took the L. How does it feel to lose you, Eric, and son of a, you know, stuff wow. like that. <laughs> now, Spencer, will you, in your in your rehab and getting trying to get back on the mat, with you going to Iowa City um, in the future, what are your, your plans? Do you plan on rehabbing at home or getting getting to uh, Iowa City and, and working with those trainers as soon as possible, or what's your game plan that have you thought um, that far? Well, I graduate June 2nd. My graduation party is June 3rd, and... I'm pretty sure I'm moving out there like a week later. So but I'm going to be rehabbing um, my knee for the first like you know two months, obviously, here in PA. I have an awesome physical therapist and John Bonarotti. And I have an, obviously, I had, you know, in my opinion, the best surgeon in the country, and, uh, Dr. Bradley. And uh, I'm very fortunate for all of that. You know, he happened to be right here in Pittsburgh. So that was really, really fortunate for me. And then. You know, I have a great physical therapist who's doing everything he can to help me out. Um, I really have nothing to rush back into. Um, I have no world championship or anything that I can make. So uh, I think the focus right now is just getting 100% healthy and you know, making sure that I, I'll be back stronger than ever. It's time to get Jack. South Dakota State's Chris Bono is up next. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey's General Store. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you 
global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. He had a record-setting season at South Dakota State and was recently named the Big 12 Conference Coach of the Year. We're talking, of course, about Chris Bono. His Jackrabbits compiled a 14-5 dual record, placing third at the conference championships and 16th at the NCAA Finals in St. Louis. Perhaps just as impressive as the rising popularity of the program, a team that once topped out at just 800 fans is now averaging nearly 2,000 a duel. We talked with Coach Bono about his team's historic year and building a national power in Brookings. You know, as everybody knows, it's, uh, it's not me. You know, I got a great team around me, starting with our athletic director and, you know, running all the way down to my kids and, you know, and, and my, my assistant coaches that, um, you know, do, do the majority of the work here. So really it's, it's uh I told these guys it's not a me award. This was a we award and a team award. So uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, it's great to be recognized by the Big 12, but um, really it's our team that deserves that uh, Big 12 Coach of the Year. Oh, we averaged uh, this year over 1,800 um, uh, fans in the stands for, uh, I think we had eight home duels. Oh. So we averaged over 1,800. Um, and I can tell you that what's really cool was before I got here, the record for attendance was 800. That was our record number, and you know we met, we we beat that with West Virginia two years ago um, with 980, and then of course every match this year surpassed that 980 uh, by far. So it was uh, it's been a great couple of years with our fans. Our fans are great here in Brookings, um, and really it's you know we do a lot of promotions and things like that to get them in there, and uh, you know we give them a good product. You know it's um, our kids wrestle hard. And uh, that's what they want to come see. And, you know, we've got a band in there. And we've got, uh, you know, throwing T-shirts at people. And it's a, it's something that if you watched on TV, you wouldn't get the full the full uh, aspect of it all. So, um, you know, we've, we've got a great promotion staff, a great marketing staff. And we go out, we get people in the stands. It's a lot of work. You know, you're not just going to sit there and let people come into your arena. you got to go out there and get them to come in and give them a reason to get in there. You know, it's special. I've got a special team. I've got special kids. Uh, you just don't walk away from that. I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm building something. We are building something here. And, um, you know, it, I want to see this thing through. And, you know, we just had our most successful year. Um, and I've got four out of my five qualifiers coming back and a national runner-up. And, and I'll tell you what, i got an athletic director that supports wrestling. That is very, very rare. Um, i got a guy that's driving home on a bus with us 10 hours from the NCAA tournament instead of flying because he wants to be with the team. And, uh it's, it's just something special. So, uh, no, I'm here, man. I'm in South Dakota. I'm in Brookings. I'm entrenched. My, my assistant coaches are entrenched. We've got families. And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm dedicated to these guys. One of the many athletes behind SDSU's recent success is sophomore Seth Gross. The Minnesota native finished 34-2 and on the year, becoming the team's first Big 12 champ and the only South Dakota State wrestler ever to reach the NCAA Finals. So history will play this out. We'll see what happens in the future. But I got to think that... You know, 10 years from now, we're going to go back and look at the teams that you're on right now right. as sort of those, the foundation mm -hmm. for creating what South Dakota State may become, which may be, as, as Coach Bono talked about a few minutes ago, got to get in that top 10, got to get in that top five if you want to challenge for a national title. And, yeah. and I believe you guys are going to get there. How do you feel about being one of those guys that's laying that foundation for the future? No, it's awesome. And, uh, you know, we're just, uh, I believe we'll be a top 10 team next year, even after that, you know, senior year, I want to be a top five team. And then I'm hoping to stay around here and help help continue the place, help South Dakota continue to grow and stuff. And you know, it's just awesome, you know, knowing that you get you're getting it going. And uh, it's awesome to be a part of a team that's up and coming. And uh, a couple of years ago it was like not even a top fifty team. And uh, 
you know, something special. And uh, you, we're all like family out here. And uh, I think it helps that we're so close and we just want to do it for each other. And that's that's what really motivates us. It's just cool. And everybody supports. So, there's so much support here for wrestling. And uh, it's awesome. And, yeah, I'm just, just lucky to be here. Love it here. Back on the East Coast, Duke University has followed a similar path to success in the ACC. With a sixth-place finish at 285, junior Jacob Casper became the third Blue Devil wrestler ever to earn All-American honors, helping guide the team to a top 35 finish in St. Louis. We caught up with the head coach, Glenn Lanham, to talk about his team and the growing impact of marketing the sport. Yeah, I mean, we have some good guys. We had some guys that made some really good gains this year. Thayer Atkins at 125. I mean, we had a transfer uh, come in uh, from Missouri, Cole Bumgarner. So we we had a pretty solid team. We we did, however, uh, end up redshirting uh, Mitch Fine Silver. He was, uh, you know, got to the blood round uh, last year and just wanted to redshirt, get bigger and get stronger to come back. So you know, we had Connor Bass that that qualified for us. Uh, we had Jake Faust as well. So we, we had, you know, we had three qualifiers. We were off two from uh, from the year previous. We had five. So it, it, it's a process. It's a process of just uh, just trying. I remember, you know, coming in, looking at this job. They had one qualifier every year. So that was something that we wanted to do. We wanted to get multiple qualifiers. And, and the more qualifiers you have, the more opportunities you have to put, uh, put, to put people on the podium. So uh, we ended up doing that. And, and I don't think a lot of, you know, people look at it and going into it, but this is the fourth year in a row that we did have a, a, a guy on the podium. So, you know, looking at that, we're, we're growing. I feel like we have the opportunity next year to put multiple guys on the podium. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a process here. It takes a little longer here than it does at some other places, but I feel like, you know, we're getting the ball rolling with, with, the, with the consistency of, of, of doing that. You, you have to have, you have to get out there and, and let uh, people know about Duke wrestling, the only way you're going to have to do it is that if you're passionate about your program, no one's going to do a better job than you. So that's why we we look at that and we say it's important not just to be on the mat, but, you know, social media. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're doing all of those things uh, to make sure that uh, anybody looking at Duke wrestling uh, can see the full story of what we're trying to do here. Our wrestling news continues from around the world. That's after this. You're watching Takedown, powered by Defense Soap. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one.
Like every other day, the Iowa State Senate and House of Representatives opened last Wednesday with a prayer and a Pledge of Allegiance. But on this Wednesday, the opening announcements concluded with Go Hawks. The Iowa Senate voted unanimously to approve Senate Resolution 14th. It proclaimed March 29th as Corey Clark Recognition Day. A University of Iowa senior and native of nearby Pleasant Hill, Clark was honored for bringing an NCAA title back to his home state. We have a special guest with us today, a distinguished guest from the University of Iowa, Corey Clark, who won a Division I national championship at 133 pounds. He is the 19th Iowa wrestler to become a four-time All-American. In 2015 and 2016, he finished runner-up, and this year he got it done by winning the national championship. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Senate the Senate congratulates Mr. Clark on becoming the 2017 NCAA Division I wrestling champion at 133 pounds and designates March 29, 2017 as Corey Clark Recognition Day in Iowa. It's an accomplishment that very few Iowans will ever reach, so it's a, one that has the merit to be recognized by the Iowa Senate and understand how much uh, training goes behind something like that. And there's always setbacks, but it's always fun to celebrate the victories, and so I really thought it was important to have Corey come here to the Iowa Senate and be recognized. The Senator from Jackson moves Senate Resolution 14. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those say no. The motion prevails. Senate Resolution 14 is adopted. Uh, it was a great experience. It was a pleasure to be honored by the Iowa Senate and the House of Representatives, and it was just a good time. Hi, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Yep, Welcome to the governor's office. I'm glad to have you here. How are you, Jerry? Jerry? How's it going? Good to see governor, you. Governor, good to see you. It made me feel, you know, aware that a lot more people than I thought cared actually care. I mean, just a lot of great people showing their feelings towards the sport of wrestling and towards me and what I achieved. Four-time All-American Gabe Dean is next. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. When looking for a quality pizza, you need a place that makes everything from scratch, using fresh ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. And if you can grab a lotto ticket while you're there, well, lucky you. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. On the latest episode of USA Wrestling's Bonus Points podcast, Richard Emmel caught up with two-time NCAA champ Gabe Dean. The Michigan native just wrapped up his collegiate career as a four-time All-American and the all-time wins leader at Cornell. In this USA Wrestling exclusive, Dean talked about his final trip to the NCAAs, overcoming adversity and creating a legacy that will last a lifetime. Now you're back in the finals for the third straight year. This time, 
you're the featured match. You know, you're the last last match of the night. You're the matchup everyone wants to see. What did you know about Nickel going into the match? You know, was he the guy you expected to be there? And when you got there, is it sort of what you expected to feel when you um when you took the mat? Um, yeah, you know, he he had a great year, heck of a wrestler. It just we had a game plan going into it, and um, you know, it just uh, you just can't control the outcome sometimes. And uh, he uh, he tipped my hat to him. You know, he's he won his first national title, and you know good for him and his program so i think any guy their senior year wrestling for their last national title would want to be in that spot regardless of the outcome you know it's kind of a good way to end your college career being the last match of the NCAA tournament and going out that way and i was grateful for that opportunity so i don't know it was a lot of fun and i definitely enjoyed the experience that's for sure i think the thing that i'm going to take with me that will carry with me the rest of my life is is not the results of the wrestling that um, happened, but just the the people that I've been able to you know connect with and meet and um, develop relationships with. That's what's really special. That's kind of behind the scenes, you know, little moments with different people and that kind of thing that you really get to carry with you the rest of your life. And I uh, I just really love the the fact that I've been able to meet so many cool, so many awesome, so many great representatives for this sport and develop relationships with them and my teammates and my coaching staff and my program as a whole i'm just uh i'm just really going to take the the relationships with me the rest of my life and take a lot of pride in that um i'm just so glad that i was able to be around so many awesome people you know i'm reading reading stories um about you and i think you know the one thing that sort of stuck out to me is um I'm reading on the Cornell website, you know, tens and thousands of admiring fans, you know, like you, you have that, that fan base built up and people that you've influenced throughout your career. You know, what does that mean to you to have, to have that sort of support and that following, um, you know, especially given, you know, what's occurred over the last, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, what's the support been like for you? Um, it's been absolutely incredible. Uh, I'm really just truly blessed. I, to have, if you would have told me coming into my college uh, career uh, that I would have been able to do some of the things that I was able to do, I would have uh, I would have probably laughed at you because uh, it's just been um, unbelievable. The whole journey through college, what I've learned, the people that I've met, and uh, just the things that I've gotten to do with so many awesome people. And I don't know, the pleasure has been all mine. And um I'm I'm just very humbled by the fact that I have so much support and so much uh, so many just good people around me. So I'm 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 extremely lucky to to be in the spot that I am and um, going forward is uh, with with everybody that I love and care about and that loves and cares about me. So I'm very lucky. So kind of looking towards the future now, uh, what does the future hold for you? I mean, um, I'm pretty sure you're going to keep wrestling just based on my intel, but. Uh, I'd rather you say it. Well, I mean, what uh, what do you see yourself doing in the near term future, long term future? I mean, what uh, what are your plans? Um, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm going to be wrestling in the U.S. Open at the end of April, and um, I think I'm going to the Pan American stuff as well <clears throat> in Brazil. Right after that, uh, I've never been more uh, more eager, more motivated, more excited to. Uh, get on to this next part of uh, international style wrestling. I think I have so much to learn and there's so many people that I can draw so much knowledge from. And I'm uh, like I said, man, it's just my, my journey is never, is never been like, like always been at the top. Never. Um, I've always had setbacks in my career. I've always had um, things that I've had to overcome and uh, I've just kind of jumped into it. And, uh, uh, that's what I'm going to do here. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, you know, I don't know what's going to, you know, what, what, uh, you know, God has in the cards for me in this next chapter, but you know, I'm going to go for it. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I'll see, see what, see what happens. So, and that's the way I've kind of just lived my whole uh, life up to this point. And, um, you know, 
and whether you know you just can walk when you do when you live your life that way i just believe you know you can walk away at the end of the day and at least you know you know if you if you know if it worked out or not so i definitely don't want to ever live in my live my life with the what ifs i just want to go for things Special thanks to Richard Emmel and all our friends at USA Wrestling. Don't forget, you can find all the breaking wrestling news, interviews, articles, event previews, and a lot more anytime for free at TakedownWrestle.com. From our home in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, everybody.